Hello there, my name is Rachel Lucky Talk About Animation, and today we're talking about Real Night Secret of My Way, Episode 7, Episode I 8. And now, the seventh episode was sort of surprising because it was sort of basically they're trying to escape Mr. Green and the Gremlins because L, Sam, and the Goddess sort of attempted to escape. But interesting enough, it was sort of kind of like a video game chase scene because it's how incredible that chasing what it was that basically they're trying to escape of the fox clan who wants gizmo because gizmo smells delicious and also escape the gremlins because mr green sent them but that sort of interesting fight and chasing was kind of incredible especially you have that sort of argument of the goddess through point a to point b because she's just despise human she even when maybe woman she has to just belittle human beings because everything they're trying to do something good they she sees it the way it's bad because the very end you do bad stuff yeah i don't blame her but besides that she was very naggy about that so specifically to l that let's face it l sort of did something kind of questionable and now she basically be haggled by the goddess every step in the way even that the goddess is half dead that she can easily leave her there to her own doom but yet they still need the goddess and they try to skip this sort of crossway different universes to the situation if you put it in that direction she can save gizmo the kids or herself if they get there interesting enough they made a plan to sort of separate to be the sam and the goddess baits and uh, not sam L and the guys to be bait and Sam and gives them to escape to the secret place they need to go. But interesting enough, Sam's had difficulty to hide Gizmo because he smells delicious and every other kind of creature wants to eat him. But they figure out a very interesting way to escape to the smell. They find a carton for a fish. At least what you think are fish, you realize Oh no, there is it's not a fish cart. It's a mature creature who look like a cart for some apparent reason. That he just went his time to the right moment to eat Gizmo. During this time of way the right moment, you see just Sam and the goddess just bicker back and forth. That both of them have decent points, the reason why they're doing things, but at the same time, it was sort of tiring a little bit. But besides that, I think the most interesting thing is how they have to fight this sort of fish creature who trying to eat the, the basically gizmo. And they try to do their best to get rid of it, till they push it off basically the side of the bridge and they drown in the water. At least, the, how the kids are interpreted, then the god says... Are you guys not using common sense? It's a fish. It was born in water. You just give her a power up. And he did. And this is the point the animation was glorious. Because the fish tempted to eat Gizmo. Sam stopped uh, the fish eating Gizmo. And she eat instead. And the goddess stepped in and sliced it in half. But that animation was smooth. I mean. Damn, that was good animation. That sort of, wow, you just wasn't expecting to be that good. But besides that, now they have to save Sam because she's sort of a halfway take dead. To have to figure out to save her, you also push Mr. Green and the Gremlins not getting close to them and also help them transport in the secret location of the Mogwai. But the only way to do this is basically... The goddess has to basically sacrifice herself or be, be defense for a little while to elect the kids to skip the other world. I have to admit, this is another moment in the animation was sort of interesting how, not just the animation, but how the world building, how this goddess of transport does his soul magic and how he moved person to one certain location that was sort of funny and interesting. Usually, you have a teleport, that's a magic door, that's all you need. No, no, this one did go that extra step to why you factor to move all the other doors just to specifically choose that door to open. And I thought that was kind of fun to see. I kind of wish they explained how it actually works, but I don't think you need to. It's just sort of the fun factor of the magic of 
transporting someone else to point A to point B was just sort of entertaining. Now, this is the point of the guys had to face Mr. Green and all the gremlins. And it was pretty badass. If you have something from the 80s or even 70s that sort of shoot back, block, block back, and shoot back. But it done a very kind of almost Dragon Ball Z kind of anime power up, blowing up kind of situation. And that's, it's not over at top of these in the very beginning till one of the gremlins can pass the shield of the goddess because... He was having a matching ring who defends other magic. He not fully realized this matching ring works. He took that savages, took down the goddess, and Mr. Green ate the goddess. Yeah, I was like, whoa, I mean, he won? I mean, I mean, be fair, he was sort of a handicapped fight, so yeah, that makes sense. But I wasn't expecting Mr. Green to get a Super Saiyan power-up. It was so over-exaggerated, over blowing up over doing it but at the same time now Mr. Green is more power than ever before because he has sort of a goddess level but I love it is the sass of the goddess before she get in by Mr. Green like so you use power magic really I mean that's it that's why you're so powerful that I didn't understand how lame this power really is to the goddess pointing out after she get eaten the goddess assistant, the man who transported the kids, reappeared on the next episode doing the same thing, explaining pretty well that that power is almost like a leech type of power. Something that you just don't respect because it's not really power. And I thought that sort of fascinating how every time a magic creature or a goddess or a god just scuff on that power. like. Yeah, that's pretty good rain, bro. That's sort of a magic trick to us. And that's kind of sad, especially how the the transporter man of Goddess, he just sort of break down Mr. Green. Like, he just put him down quite literally, just seeing all his bastard, the reason why he is how he is, because he doesn't have the hug or love of his own family. That's what became sort of empty is always hungry for more power because he's trying to fill that power very pretty basic but at the same time makes sense why mr green act this way but at the same time mr green having none of it he just sliced the man in half and make a point like yeah i'm superior you i do what i want you have to have no reason to use you so he goes where the gremlins goes and he did and show how powerful mr green become during this time, the kids and Gizmo finally went back home to drop uh, Gizmo where he lives. They're all happy, but Sam is not happy. She wants treasure. Like, where's my gold? Where's my stuff? To the girl, to the mug, while trying to give her rocks. Like the very beginning, she doesn't understand what rocks this rocks really are. To be honest, with you, I was also like, why are you giving her rocks? And during this conversation. She finds the sword of creation, the sword who created the gremlins in everything around the world. But at the same time, it's something that you should never be played. Even points out in the episode that it's something that you need focus. Like, I'm bright will focus to understand what you need. You cannot be distracted for a second because if you don't, something bad won't happen. Even that Mr. Green reappears, took the sword for also and use the magic even he has sort of trouble using the sword but a little bit that sort of duality that you think you're that smart that clever mr green having the sword that honestly maybe it wasn't a good idea to use the sword you see at the end of the episode but besides i go that specific understanding i felt fascinating that mr green has sort of morals in a way like he just give uh, Sam's parents back just because he doesn't really need them. I mean, he doesn't need to eat them because he has nothing useful for them. He just give it away. It, that, that's sort of weird. Like, I wasn't expected to be honorable in a way. And that's why I feel Mr. Green is just a very interesting, good villain. That he is just complicated because he has his own issues, but it doesn't mean he's completely a monster, even that he is a monster. He's just sort of complicated but of course i found it fascinating that when he has the sword 
he has the power of God, his plans should change. And that change makes sense. Like how he processes everything, trying to talk about the evil gremlins. You know our plans change. I'm not going to give you a vote. I'm going to betray you. You're not my servants for the rest of your life. On top of all this, he is a mogwai. Now he's a mortal that just make my boy. I mean, it's sort of hard to describe that he became the ultimate villain. He had everything. He won. And that's sort of surprising because he wasn't expecting to Mr. Green to win. I mean, usually is they could have stopped it before he got power up or after. But it's sort of where to a villain to actually have a one-up power up that he or she or they win. They definitely not works. Yeah, I was sort of surprised. So you find now the gremlins portrayed uh, Mr. Green. But I love it is how the portrayal Mr. Green like knew the portrayal is coming. He had a plan, a plan after a plan. But I didn't expect it to be that hardcore backstabbing. I mean, they stabbed him, they cut his arm off, and they used a sword of creation to destroy the honor arm to make sure Mr. Green doesn't one up them. And it was disturbing, surprising. I was like, they went there? It's just like, what? How? Why? Like, it kind of blew my mind. They just went there. It just like, this show just surprised me every single time. Every single chance they have, they just go there. This is just animation for everyone. Even they sort of scary, even they try to avoid showing gore, but they give you an idea what's going on. And that's that's sort of interesting. But besides that, this final episode do focus on Sam, that he has the chance to stop Mr. Green. But the only problem is he has the sort of creation, but he doesn't know really how to use it. He understands he has power, but he basically lacks focus because I said at the very beginning, the sword needs to be focused. You need to have clear. You have to have confidence to use the sword. One doubt can actually give you a bad result. And you just see Sam sort of breaking down. He has the chance, but yet you can't blame the kid because he always has doubts. He was basically the right person to have the sword. But yet if that sort of situation is the best you can do, you have no choice to use it. But once more. He didn't have the confidence, you won't blame the kid. Even Sam blames him. I feel she pushed him too hard because she also make a lot of questionable decisions. I mean, all through all this episode, she was being a little uh, SOB, including the goddess. I mean, they didn't ruin the episodes, but yet you kind of you ask them, they became a little bit annoying because they won't accept the situation, especially Sam. How, not Sam, uh, L, I mean, how she is sort of. Not trustful in that words. I'm sorry if this gets confusing a little bit, but besides that, hopefully I make sense. But at the very end, that Mr. Green was defeated by the gremlins when what unexpected, and now they're trying to uh, destroy the city because they just want to have a fun. And Mrs. Uh, Claus now has the sword and basically destroyed the village, all other villages just for fun. And you just hear. See Sam, L, and uh, Sam's parents now tempted to figure out how to get the situation. So yeah, this is one of those shows that got better, even they have its own flaws, but yet it delivers every single time. Even if you disagree with some of the characters, it delivers. It's that good. Of course, I got nothing else to say. Just one question: How you felt about the whole thing? Do you hate it? Do you love it? Tell me down below. Let me know. I got nothing else to say, just thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe, and have a wonderful day. Bye.